Companies will get more help to maximise the value of their intellectual property. A network of law firms and consultancies providing free advice will be expanded next month. Authorities have also put together a list of Singapore-based expert witnesses for dispute resolution proceedings. Well, Second Law Minister Edwin Tong says he hopes these initiatives will strengthen Singapore's position as a global IT hub. We cannot afford to keep still. We are operating in a fast-paced, cutting-edge technology environment. And that is, of course, as you all know, is the hallmark of a good IP economy. These efforts will cater to both at the ecosystem, the broader ecosystem level, as well as to those who operate individually in this. Mr. Tong was speaking at the opening of the annual IP Week. Five companies were recognised for their innovations and intellectual property management strategies. The overall winner was molecular diagnostics company Inex Innovate. It's developing test kits to detect diseases like ovarian and breast cancer, as well as genetic abnormalities in fetuses. They utilise the patient's blood to provide accurate efficient results to the patient. This compares quite favourably with many existing methods which are more invasive in nature. It also means in the case of, for example, our oncology tests, they will be available at GPs rather than specialist clinics, for example. So bringing those tests closer to the point of care of the patient. Well, for more, we're joined by Darren Tang, Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization. Well, Darren, Singapore has a 10-year master plan to enhance its position as a global hub for IP. Uh, how can this drive a country's economic development? Well, good evening. It's, back to be, uh, it's, back, it's good to be back on CNA. Um, I think Singapore does consistently well in IP rankings because it looks at IP not just from a legal angle, but it looks at it from as a very powerful catalyst for jobs, for investments, uh, and so two for economic, economic development. Uh, and in order to do that effectively, you need to take an ecosystem approach. It's not just enough to pass the right laws. You need to put in place all the other elements that allows that IP to go up to the market. And that's so important to maximizing the value of the IP, not just for companies, but even at the national level. And in order to do that effectively, you need to coordinate actions across the private sector, across the public sectors. And think here's where Singapore does it really well. We have uh, Singapore has a plan. It's a long-term plan. It, it lays out what the plan is so that everyone can coordinate and align with the plan. And in fact, I think these, these are the measures that at WIPO, we are trying to encourage other countries to do as well. And in fact, over the last 10 years, WIPO has helped uh, over 100 uh, countries to also implement their own national IP strategies. Well, Darren, has COVID-19 affected the global marketplace for intangible assets and how so? Well, I, I think at the company level, what we are seeing is that the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated digitalization. And just before this, we were watching a Charles and Keith, uh, and Charles and Keith is talking about how it's going to make use of online and digital strategies to go out to new markets. You just heard Minister Gan talk about using this opportunity to transform businesses and to look at new business models. Uh, so I think if you look at companies like Zoom and I think local or regional super app grab going for a SPAC listing quite soon, you see that many, many companies that have transformed their business models to look at uh, digitalization, innovation technology, uh, they have, the, the pandemic has allowed them to accelerate their plans and to use these, these innovation, innovative, um, creative and IP related techniques and models to, to drive business growth. At the global level, as you know, as coming from you know, the vantage point that I have as the as the head of the UN agency in charge of IP, what we are seeing is that the pandemic has increased and accelerated these trends across the world. So, global value of intangible assets uh, last year reached 65 trillion US dollars. That's more than the size of the US and the Chinese economies combined. And in fact, innovation remains a very resilient part of global economy. Uh, global patent filings increased by 4% last year, even in the midst of the pandemic. And global trademark filings dipped last year, but have fully recovered this year. So I think what we're seeing is that the pandemic has accelerated trends towards technology, trends towards innovation, towards digital transformation. The, the pandemic has, has really brought home the fact that innovation and IP are very resilient parts of the economy. And I think it drives home the point that, that 
IP really is a very important factor for success for more and more companies around the world. And so then, Darren, what will this mean for SMEs uh, who are looking to protect and commercialise the IP they produce? So I think for, for SMEs, what's, what's key to, 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 to remember now is that IP is not just for big, high-tech MNCs. IP is also for small, medium enterprises, for startups, even for entrepreneurs. And it's not just about uh, entrepreneurs or startups in high-tech areas. It's for everyone. If, for example, you take an entrepreneur in the food and beverage business, if you're trying to uh, franchise your FMB concept across the region, you want to export your brand overseas, you need to have a good trademark strategy so that that allows you to maximize your brand value across, across borders. So, so I think, first of all, uh, SME owners, entrepreneurs need to pay attention to IP, see it as part of your core business strategy. Don't just leave it to, to, to the experts or the specialists. Uh, pay attention to it in the boardroom, pay attention to it at the C-suite level. The second thing that I think will happen is that because intangible assets have become the most valuable part of a company's assets, uh, it itself is a way for companies to raise funds. Uh, as more and more of our uh, companies uh, drive value through intangible assets, we are looking to see whether we can help these companies uh, collateralize these assets, use it to, to get debt financing or use it to raise capital. So issues around IP financing, IP valuation are emerging as, as important topics in the IP community. So WIPO wants to work with IP officers, with ministries uh, of finance and central banks around the world to see how we can shape IP valuation financing standards so that SMEs can use IP and the IP that they're creating, the intangible assets they're creating, to finance and to grow uh, using these assets as collateral or as other ways to raise, uh, to raise funds. Well, thank you, Darren Tang, Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization.